Hey everybody, it's Rob from Flailthroughs. Welcome back to Gundam Breaker 4. And yeah, we are going to pick up where we left off and finish off uh, the Chapter 5 quests so we can build a really good gunpla for fighting chaos and hopefully a really goofy gunpla. Like, I, like I've said before, I just, I enjoy absurdity, you know. Ah, it is... Ah, it, it is just good stress relief to just be ridiculous every so often so if i can make a tiny little robot with a big gun for a face sure i was tempted to make the gun like the largest it could possibly be and and have it just you know All right, it's go time. eclipse the rest of the suit but i decided against it this time okay we've got targets that is a sharzaku and we'll get to that in due time but for now I want to uh get some of the uh some of the extra ones, build up uh, the meter, get more parts like that. I'll get to you in a second, Char. Hang tight. Okay, well, I'll hit him with that. Well, I got some Zaku Mine Layer legs, so... And a Zuda head. Alright. To be honest, I feel like sometimes it's very difficult to... Oh, wow, six for the first wave? Interesting. Sometimes I feel like it's very difficult to design new one-year war mobile suits that look like they belong with the rest of the pack. You know. The Zuda, I think, does a pretty good job of it. I didn't necessarily like it as much as I do now when it first came out, but that's just how I tend to be. It takes me a while to warm up to designs and things like that sometimes. But, yeah, just a lot of... A lot of Kunio Okawara's, like, later one-year war designs look like whatever else Kunio Okawara was designing at that time. And, you know, actually getting into that groove where things look like, you know, Federation or especially Xeon designs from that period, really kind of tough. But Zuda did it very well. I've, you know, I've had conversations with uh, friends sometimes about how, you know, sometimes, uh, there's just, like, different ways to approach mechanical design. And just because, just besides level of detail and things like that, I feel like, to a certain degree, the original, the original versions of Gundam character designs, or mechanical designs, are like Transformers, more character designs than they are mechanical designs. And when we get into the later things where we're, you know, where they get more focused on trying to make these things look like plausible war machines, we get more into an industrial design aesthetic than the original series. I like both. There are places for both and reasons to do both. And I, yeah, I, you know, I have, that's, I think that's why I have so many RX-78s. Like, there, there are so many different ways to interpret and modify that design. But they're also all pretty much recognizable as the Gundam. So, yeah, I, you know, I wish I'd got, oh boy, Thunderbolt, uh, gun, thun, full armor Thunderbolt and the Zaku. But, yeah, I wish I'd gotten better at drawing, because, you know, I I wish I could... I wish I could draw these things as well as I feel like I can articulate them, but on a good day, anyway. But, yeah, I just never quite got there. Perspective was... Uh, perspective and, uh, was among the many things that threw me, but it was probably the worst of them. Ironically, the first perspective I, uh, uh, the first tutorial on perspective I feel like ever made sense to me was, uh, by Mark Simmons, who, uh, of course has been a, uh, Gundam fan forever, been a Gundam, uh, been worked on the Gundam franchise as a translator, and, uh, you know, and other various, uh, similar, uh, jobs on a lot of Gundam, uh, uh, Gundam property, a uh, Gundam 
what's the word I'm looking for? Products. Products isn't it, but stories, something along those lines. Yeah, I'm really good at articulating things, can you tell? But, uh, yeah, in addition to his work on Gundam in, in a variety of capacities, and as a fan and, uh, you know, researcher and historian of it, uh, he's also an art teacher and has uh, and, uh, and a comic artist. So um, that uh, Gundam Wing comic that uh, Bandai had on their site a couple of years ago, that was him. But, yeah, it was... Uh, yeah, like I said, his uh, if his tutorial on perspective is still out there. It really did help me some, but yeah, by by that time, by that time I was starting to have the neck and the arm pains, and that kind of made things harder. And just yeah, never never quite got there, but that's all right. I'll go back to it and do it for fun when I feel like it, and then probably be just as well off. But. But yeah, I've always liked I've always liked design. I've always had uh, you know I've always had art books around. Like I was saying the other day, I grew up with my dad's uh, you know Silver Age Marvel comics, and those were you know they had some truly great artists on those that knew uh, knew how to knew how to draw really good pictures that in a way that served the story above all else. Which is a very difficult skill to know exactly what needs to be there and what doesn't to get your point across and keep people in the story. But, yeah, so... Yeah, just like... You know, my dad always was a big fan of cartoons and comic art. Fantasia by Disney, one of his all-time favorite movies. Yellow Submarine, another. And, uh, yeah, grew up around all that stuff. And, you know, I, I, you know, I, I, I feel like the fact that in its earliest days, the, the Transformers was heavily involved with Marvel Comics really did help it a, a great deal in many ways. Made it, uh, you know, I, I believe... It was at least one Marvel artist who uh, refined the designs for animation. I think it was uh, attributed to John Romita, who who was the like longest running artist on Spider-Man, but that turned out not to be true. Which you know, the internet is good at misinformation, and and so so are fandoms that for years all of their information came through, you know, asking artists to recall something from 20, 30 years ago at a convention that that's you know ah history is always a game of telephone to a certain degree but just yeah eventually eventually hopefully you get it right it's not easy all right so that is okay off to the final part of wave two and, which is a camphor and an Alex. Interesting, they used the uh, second version Alex art instead of the first, because a lot of these use uh, art from the first uh, releases of various kits, but uh, yeah, for some reason the Alex got its, uh, got its modern box art. I don't know why. I don't know what the criteria were, but yeah version of the Alex I got, of course, was the rare uh, yellow band version that was for uh, U.S. Toys R Us's when uh, after Gundam was uh, kind of done in the U.S. for a while as a mass market thing, TRU clearanced out those Alex's for like $15, $16 a piece. So, yeah, my brother and I each got one. And I was not coordinated enough to really get the cutouts for that uh, for the rubber joint housings done properly. I'm going to have to take that out sometime and see if those have melted to it. Because that is a problem that uh, certain types of uh, latex have when you leave them in a box for too long. The one that got me is for when the, when the original 30th anniversary of G.I. Joe happened in 1994. The anniversary of the original toy line 
which has absolutely nothing to do with Real American Hero. Like, those 1964 G.I. Joes, I think, are really interesting, but yeah, there was no story to them at all. They were basically Barbie dolls with guns. And, yeah, I wanted the Navy Scuba Diver set, because I thought it looked cool. And I got it, and the rubber for it melted within a year after I wound up going, getting it very, very, in a very costly, uh, site uh, a sale on the secondary market like a couple of years after it came out yeah i took it out of the box a year later of this toy that cost me like 75 90 dollars in the 90s and all of the rubber scuba gear was melted to its body it was horrifying so this is probably one of the things that uh makes me very resistant to paying more than retail price for anything anymore there, i've made a few exceptions over the years but it has to be something that i was sure would not disintegrate and ah, at least we're going just going straight into a fight on this one let's see satellite cannon yes but yeah just i hate paying more than retail for for toys toys or model kits every so often i'll make an exception i bought the japanese version of beast wars megatron transmetal megatron because it does not have the uh, deadly gold plastic syndrome so that was actually worth it because it will presumably not disintegrate the way the older ones uh, the, the US one would so that was to my way of thinking a justified purchase because there has been zero attempt to uh, reissue that toy over the years so and it's a really great toy and it's a Big shiny metal dinosaur and roller skates. How do you not love that? So yeah, that's that was worth it. But yeah, I, I don't don't do it super often. Let's see if I can get this guy in the corner, or target something else entirely. Well, I'm hitting it, so I'll, yeah, I did manage to drag it along. That's pretty good. And then followed up with the obvious, which looks like I I'm just in time to have another one available when my targeting comes back. There we go. Nope, it is overheated. Oh, well. Not like it's my only option by a long shot. Thank you for jumping. God, I love the satellite cannon. Yeah, the improved cool uh, option part cooldown is something great. It is really handy. Okay, satellite cannon again, then. Yes, yeah, shoot directly to its right. That'll learn it. All right, now. Stand still, please. Oh, knock your uh, backpack off. That'll help with standing still to a certain degree, I think. Ah, there we go. I was about to say, why did you not track that this one time? That's kind of bad. Almost got it. That did it. Okay. So that's another stage down. And not bad. Yeah. When you're that small, you look so uh, fast the camera can't even keep up with you. It's great. I think I also do have some boost speed uh, power-ups, but... Okay, what do we got? We've got hidden arm armor right and left. Are you some sort of new type? I think those are for the Nightingale. I'm not 100% sure. Have been, uh, the builder's parts at least show you where they come from, so... Five-star Nightingale head and some GP and almost to uh, 28. Nice. And S rank all around. Okay, five-star Heat Hawk. Five star beam naginata, all relatively low level, but they are fairly decent. New gun MFF, rocket launcher from the high mobility Gelgug, and hyper mega rifle from the high new Gundam. Uh, yep, here's our five star nightingale head, which okay, boy, that is a lot of uh, that's a lot of uh, 
of Commander's antenna there. Oh, let's see. Zeong, Jim Command, Dom, and Zuda. Zaku Mine Layer. Here's Johnny Ryden's Gilgoog's torso. That really is a sharp uh, color scheme. Uh, they they differentiated it from Char's Gilgoog very nicely. Uh, let's see. You have some good five-star parts, mostly, again, relatively low level, but they are, you know, the rarity. It's fairly easy to level things with the uh, plastic you get in this, so that's not a huge deal. All right, Char's Gilgoog arm, Thunderbolt Gundam arm. Ah, with gun attached, that's nice. Uh, let's see, relatively high uh, level Zaku arms here. Of a bunch of different kinds. Uh, the other Thunderbolt Gundam, uh, that's right, it has a missile launcher on that arm, so. Alex arm, Gatlings. Uh, Alex arm, interesting. Um, the Master Grade specifically include uh, the newest Master Grade, I believe. The original, too, now that I think about it. Uh, actually has mechanisms built in to let it use the Gatling while using the armor, but high grade at least can't do that. High new... That's a high new arm. Okay. Char's Gilgoog legs. Level 26 camphor legs. Zeong skirt. More Chobum parts. Okay, Zuda backpack, which, yeah, it does have... I'm going to have to look and see if the Saturn engine EX skill does make you explode. I have a feeling it does. Um, I think I remember asking that in Breaker 3 and finding out ultimately that it did. Okay, the new Gundam shield, the high new Gundam shield, which very slight differences in shape. And, yep, good pile of plastics. And long range gauge cost for long range weapons down. Two of those. 30% down, uh, of more than, thir like, 35% down between them. That, um, that is tempting, because I think, I hope, that could possibly, uh, make it a lot easier to spam nukes. I don't know that I'll necessarily be using the Atomic Bazooka after, uh, on the next build, but I feel like the chances are pretty good. This is the mission deck. I certainly do enjoy using it, but I also want to explore and see what else we've got. Okay, we're destroying a monolith. That, I believe, is also a mission type I remember from Breaker 3. So, we'll go smash a monolith. Teach those weirdos to leave their, like educational monolith so, uh, over on Jupiter. That was a half ass 2001 reference. Um, okay. Another of my dad's favorite movies for aesthetic and artistic reasons. Incidentally, it's, it's a slot machine. Las Vegas stage destroyed giant slot machines in this mission. Slot machines are invulnerable while barriers are up. Beat the guards putting up the barrier to bring the barrier down and attack the slot machines. I love it. That yeah, I don't think the monoliths were slot machines in Breaker 3, but I think there were monolith missions. Well, we'll smite all the guards and then nuke the monolith, as you do. Okay, it is nukeable now. At least a little bit. Okay, let's get some more barriers out here. Uh, okay, Musha Victory, Gold Wings version. I wonder what the alternative to the Gold Wings version is and how you get it. Okay, is that shield up or down? Looks like it's up, but... Okay, yeah. Here's the Guardian, Sumo. Okay. Alright. I can do that. Okay. Okay, there's the uh, next target. Okay, 
Okay, almost got that sumo. All right, shield is down. I wish my uh, I wish my nukes were anywhere close to ready, but okay. Shield back up. Well, they will be next time, so. And this time we've got a Hyakushiki. Of course, we're it's a slot machine. We're getting we're getting all the gold uh, things to uh, guard the monolith. Of course. There, it took a second to heal my teammates because they were looking a little bit uh, under the weather, and I think I kind of was too. So. This is kind of a cramped space. It's kind of, it's a little bit hard to keep track of where I am. I'm kind of just trusting to the target lock and throwing out attacks as fast as I can. Okay, when the Shiki goes down... Okay, no, there's one more guard. And there it is, I think. Yeah. When the Shiki goes down, we are going to unload everything. Okay, yep, I think there's like a limit to how much damage you can do on each pass, so. Either that or it's time-based and I just didn't get enough in, but. Either way, yep, the Akatsukis, that's kind of what I was expecting. Let's see. Almost got one. And I'm not really inclined to blame any camera issues I'm having on the game quite so much because they might it might work perfectly fine if I was not tiny. You never know. Okay. The monolith is destroyed. And now there's a boss. I will give them this. It is not... There are some franchises that would not be willing to let you just, uh, on, you know, wreck a piece of their merchandise, let alone, you know, a fancy slot machine and all of their model kits. So, you know, I, I do have to ap appreciate that... Ah. Gundam is more chill about that kind of thing than other uh, things are. Like, just the North Star games are somewhat restricted in what they can do because it is an official edict from uh, Tetuahara. Kenshiro cannot ever uh, be seen losing a fight. This includes fights he lost in the manga. He lost to South their first fight, and I have not seen a game that actually shows him doing that in the manga. Or, you know, I've like seen a game that lets him do that when he put, when it, they show that same scene. Like, anything, he just barely gets away, as opposed to being, you know, pretty well eaten up and having his, uh, having his unconscious body, like, hauled away, which is what happened in the manga. So, yeah, just, like... You know, when you're... I understand being protective of your characters, but when you reach a level of protective with your characters, that means you cannot even tell your own story anymore. That's a little much. So, yeah, point, points to... Uh, points to uh, Gundam for just having a whole... whole... game series about breaking its stuff. Not everyone would do that. I feel generators? Okay. And more emblems, and uh, what else? Hearts of all. Okay, good. A sumo arm. And uh, Builder Strength 28, Epion, Ultron, All Geese 2, Mark 2 with Vulcans. Okay. And a bunch of uh, 
let's see, that fancy sword again, some less fancy swords, and a shiny red katana. I kind of like that. Um, yeah, I think that goes to the Akatsuki. Not 100% sure on that. Oh, no, it says SD. It does not. Brain. Okay, well, that's a uh, interesting take on a sword rifle. I wonder if you can transform it to sword mode, or you have to get a separate one. Since it says gun mode, I'm assuming separate. There's the Sumo's handbeam gun. Um, okay, I kind of like the dragon crossbow. Kakushiki beam rifle. Another one of the sword guns. Kyakurai is the Akatsuki's beam rifle. And it's not bad looking. No heads. A Hyakushiki and a Musha Victory gold wings uh, body. Um, Musha Victory gold wings arm. Golden Sumo arm. Lubei arm. Sumo. Dragon Phoenix Strike Lubei Gundam. That's a lot of words. Uh, Lubei Unicorn. Lubei Unicorn. And Musha Victory again. And again, gold. Lubei. Dragon Phoenix Strike Lubei has... Okay, it has one launcher and one sword arm armor, I think. There's the Owashi Katsuki, which has the big pointy shoulders. Sumo Gold type, which five star. And has an IF booster. Yeah, I think that's eye field, but I could be wrong. Musha Victory uh, Gold Wings. That is that is a lot of sword for, for such stubby little legs. Blue Bay Unicorn and Owashi, Owashi Akatsuki again. That's kind of a mouthful. Uh, Dragon Phoenix Strike Lu Bay, Musha Victory Gold, which indeed does have the gold wings. I kind of like the Phoenix Backpack. It is, you know, based on the Ale Striker, obviously. And more gold wings. Let's see, that's Takakata Yoroi goes to, I'm not sure. Well, I'm assuming Lu Bay. The Experimental Type 71 Shield, that's Kotsky's. Okay. And a bunch more plastic. And evade instant death. And EXG increase in parts lost. Gauge recovery speed along range. That's temptation too. Like, I think when I when we uh, get through the whole game, maybe I'll go back and try and make a dedicated bazooka spam, atomic bazooka spam build. That would be interesting. All right. And now for the last one of chapter uh, chapter five. It is nice to see them. Uh, okay, this is a uh, kill everything mission. That's fine. But it is nice to see them introduce some new uh, mission types in here. I, I like the monolith mission fairly well. Like I said, I think I remember something similar from uh, Breaker 3. But I'm, you know, the, the I loved Breaker 3. I'm, I, I love this. So, yeah, I'm not surprised to see some similarities there. But we are going to uh, finish this off, and yeah, then we'll take a couple of days and do the part combining and the big build, and we will t uh, take on Chaos. All right, it's go time. Yes, it is. Okay, we have got the Goof Custom. All right. I wonder if we'll get the... Uh... uh Goof Crim Crimson Custom from uh, Breaker Battlelog in here. It's not exactly difficult to make, since it is just straight up entirely a Goof Custom in bright red. But, I don't know, it'd be kind of nice to just have a default version of that, too. Felt like it. Okay. There we go. There's one person over there. Time to go get them. Oh, it's a gun tank. Hi. There we are. Next. Yeah, that was an overheat. All right. These are standard goofs. Dom is down. One more person over here. Missiles for you, followed by punches. There we go. That's the first part of wave one. 
here's the second part. Betting there's going to be a boss phase here like there usually is. Okay. That is Garmazaku, I believe. Which, yeah, the Garmazaku FS. The only really, like, major physical difference it has between most other Zaku types is it does have head Vulcans. Which, yeah. And what else? Where are we? What am I doing? There we go. Ah, dead end glaive off of something. I forget what has that. I think it's... Well, I, I know I've heard the name. I just don't remember what had it. All right, Dom Legs at five stars, not bad. Okay. Easy eight. Okay, sure. Uh, here it comes. I wonder if that was just animation of Tao freaking out, or if he was, to, or if his stubby little SD legs were stuck on the cliff. I am unsure. I haven't, I haven't watched enough previous times when he was. Uh, when the bosses were incoming and he was being anxious about it to see if that's like a standard thing or not. Easy eight down. Almost time for more atomics, but I will leave those for next uh, next segment at this point, I think. But the beam rifle's not off limits and it's pretty strong. Got it. Okay. Get the Ago. It's here too. Another Ago. Oh, this Easy 8 has the parachute pack. That's nice. Yeah, the missiles, I, I think, are probably the best thing I have for breaks, so... I'm sure they're not the only thing that's good at it, but it's for terms of my current build, very handy. Alright, and that just leaves a couple of Agos, and we are on to Wave 2. There we go. Yeah, three, a 357 out of 12 and a half. That'll, that's pretty good. Yes, next one indeed. All right, so we have Charzaku again. One day I may just go crazy and like do all the major color variants of Charzaku and save them so I can just swap between them on camera and show everybody what the differences are. Because, yeah, sometimes it might be a little bit hard to tell uh, if you don't see them side by side, but once you do, you know, you can you can definitely tell. Like I said, there's, you know, there's this, which is very orangey salmon pink and, and maroon. There is uh, a slightly redder dark red that is with a slightly less orangey salmon pink. There's like slightly pinkish red with bright red torso and then there's like baby powder pink with uh with like blood red torso there's and there are so many different ways to do the basic color combination of Sharzaku. it's really kind of weird it uh, it i always it always m makes me remember though that one of the, that the uh one of the big pushes in the late 90s early 2000s the reason that the japanese animation industry uh actually finally went fully digital was the last the last living chemist who, who could mix anime cell paint decided to retire that is why that is why the japanese film industry finally went to digital it, it, around 2002 3 i want to say which it's kind of a shame because I do still like good cell animation, but 
Ah, uh, the, uh... It's not like... It's not like the, uh... You can't achieve a lot of the same things on, uh... You know, on digital animation. Like, Gundam Thunderbolt, I feel like, is a really good example of that. I'm pretty sure it was animated digitally, but it looks... It definitely looks as good as most of the, uh... Most of the old, uh, digit, uh, most of the old, you know, physical anime did. I still want to own a half-decent first Gundam Cell one day. Or a really bad one. Either one. Like, you know, there's some really good ones out there. They're very expensive. I mean, the bad ones are 45 years old, too. They're, uh, they're not, uh, they're kind of expensive anymore, too. But yeah, just, I remember, you know, I've, I've read in more recent histories of Gundam, both semi-fictionalized ones like The Men Who Created Gundam and, you know, the production histories Mark Simmons has been translating, that once Yasuhiko was in the hospital and once the pro um, production schedule got really bad, um, Tomino pitched in with some in-betweens himself. And I keep wondering, since... If some of the, like, really weird, flat uh, cells I've seen, I keep wondering if those were done by Tomino himself. Like, there's one one frame you can see where uh, from the Battle on Texas Colony where Char's Gelgug kicks the Gundam so hard it goes cubist, basically. It's really, really kind of goofy looking. And I, I keep wondering if that was him. But... Uh, yeah, they were, you know, do it, doing the best with the time, the staff, and the budget they had. And uh, w one of the things that made, like, the tail end of Gundam so stressful is once Gundam was winding down, um, a lot of its staff was shunted over to the Ultraman, which was produced the uh, same year. I believe Tomino even did storyboards for the last episode of that. Good news is that is readily available on Blu-ray in the U.S. I have a copy. And uh, it's not bad. You know, it's definitely a 1979 Sunrise uh, production, but yeah, given that it does share a lot of staff with First Gundam, but probably had a little bit more of a budget, it, it's really kind of interesting to, uh, to look at side by side. So, yeah, it's not, it's out there. I don't think it's very expensive. It is worth looking at once in a while as a, a piece of Gundam history if you are so inclined. Or if you're an Ultraman fan. I'm a little bit of an Ultraman fan and a big Gundam fan, so when I saw what that was and who did it and when, I kind of had to grab it. But, okay. Good high-quality Jim Custom head. And that's the Jim Custom sorted, and just that person left again. And the music is hiccuping again. This got patched the other day, but I'm not... I, I, I guess they had more uh, pressing things to deal with than the music uh, issues, which is fine, but... All right, and for the last wave of Chapter 5, we have got... We've got... What have we got? We've got something. We've got desert. I have a feeling this is going to be a big thing because it's a big arena. Nope, it is three normal-sized things. It is the Blue Destinies. Cool. All right, then. Out. And exam is a thing, so... Follow up with that. Let's go. All right. Oh, it's Blue Destiny's uh, two and three and a pale rider. Excuse me. Okay, I'm pretty sure I just overheated my uh, uh, stuff again, but let's see. Yeah, it's really kind of hard to steer a giant, beautiful, technology-destroying storm of nanomachines. Go figure.
Hey. All right, well, when in doubt, shoot the random empty space next to your target. All right, now. Ah, I think I finally got me arm back here. Okay. Let's got him. There's one. That just leaves the Pale Rider. There we go. Okay, yeah, so the Satellite Cannon, really good for juggles. Like, really, really good for juggles. Okay, if I don't have this guy in a second, I'll have my uh, bazooka ready, and then I will, so... Just activated Hades, if I'm not mistaken. There we go. Alright. So, what do we got? We have got S rank on that. Heal everybody, because why not? I used to do that at the end of every stage because the pre some of the previous breakers gave you bonus points for uh, healing your allies, so I don't think this one does, but hey, that, that was always that nice. Was More missile pods. More emblems. A lot of emblems. And an evolved part, and a 5-star Pale Rider shield, and a bunch of GP, and I think this will take me to Builder's Rank 29. Not quite. That'll be next time. All right, so Dead End Glaive. Yeah, I do not remember what that goes to, but it's cool looking. Yeah, I have no idea. Okay. Uh, Give Custom Sword. Dom Heat Saber. Blue version. I wonder if you can change the color. Um, Two five stars, though, one of which is level 23. That's not a bad thing. Um, Dom Bazooka. Zaku Bazooka. Or Kate and Bazooka. Team Rifle, Zeta plus A1. I like that design. And GP01. Nice. A Goof, Dom, Gun of Ground. Yeah, a lot of these seem to be like high quality or high rarity, but not both. Both is always nice to see. Got a Blue Destiny 2 torso. I really do like the just like nice, small, very efficient little backpacks. Um, Easy 8. That's got a decent level in rarity. And there's this. Uh, a one arm. Left arm. Like every left arm ever. Basically. Feels like it anyway. Including both flavors of Dom Tropin. And two Blue Destiny 3 left arms. That just somehow reminds me of the old Mortal Kombat where you'd, you know, punch somebody to pieces and like 73 femurs would come out. Yeah, I, I hit this Blue Destiny 3 so hard I got uh, two left arms off of it somehow. The gun tank, goof, dom, and ground type. More dom legs. Three custom legs. Hmm. Nice bit of detail on that. More tropin legs. More gym custom legs. I have no idea why gym custom is like all in caps. Uh, Zaku backpack. Ooh, very red. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Zaku. Uh, uh, the Zaku S's backpack is frequently just a little bit more red than the torso, uh, brighter red than the torso is, and not as, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not as quite faded as the other color on, regardless of what color scheme you're using. And then sometimes on other ones, it is just like the same, like, dark color as on Zaku 2. Hmm. Okay. Hail Rider Shield, five stars... More parts. Let's see, EX gauge increase in parts loss, exp extended activation for awaken, but long range siege recovery speed down. Not happening anytime soon. Um, yeah, I don't see anything like super useful here, but more mo uh, cartridges to pick from. So, yeah. All right, that gives me a lot of options after I reduce everything down. So that's not bad. And that is going to do it for, well, let's see what this mail is, and then uh, that'll, we'll call it. 
new title is Gunpla Collector. Well, yeah, I mean, both in real life and in the game. But that is going to do it for today's Gun and Breaker 4. We will be back tomorrow with more, if all goes well. Until next time, everybody take care and have fun. Later!